following is a paid program for Passionist Communications. Welcome, everyone, to our celebration of the Sunday Mass, the ministry of the Passionist community. As always, my name is Father Paul. It is November 24th, the Feast of Christ the King, the last Sunday in this church year. The next week, we will be celebrating Advent. Uh, today is a sponsored Mass, and our sponsor is Maria C. Villanueva, and her special intention for Mass today is for good health for El Eller Villanueva. So we want to keep Maria and Eller in our prayers today. So let us be a community of faith gathered and united as always by the sign of our faith in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you today. And as we celebrate this wonderful feast, honoring Christ as our King, let us first pause and prepare our hearts by asking His forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to the gift of everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole creation, set free from slavery, may render your majestic service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Samuel. In those days, all the tribes of Israel came to David in Hebron and said, Here we are, your bone and your flesh. In days past, when Saul was our king, it was you who led the Israelites out and brought them back. And the Lord said to you, You shall shepherd my people Israel and shall be commander of Israel. When all the elders of Israel came to David in Hebron, King David made an agreement with them there before the Lord, and they anointed him King of Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us now rejoice. said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord, and now our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, let us give thanks to the Father who has made you fit to share in the inheritance of the Holy Ones in light. He delivered us from the power of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption and the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him were created all things in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he himself might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things for him, making peace by the blood of his cross through him, whether those on earth or those in heaven. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The rulers sneered at Jesus and said, He saves others, let him save himself. If he is the chosen one, the Christ of God. Even the soldiers jeered at him as they approached to offer him wine. They called out, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Above him, there was an inscription that read, this is the king of the Jews. Now, one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuked him and replied, have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, we have been condemned justly. For the sentence we receive corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This summer I was on the road for a couple of weeks, first to Wisconsin and then to Kentucky. And as I was driving home from Kentucky, I decided to stop in Pennsylvania at Gettysburg. Uh, I didn't take any formal tour or anything, but I sort of wandered around and uh, sort of walked through some of the battlefields, some of the, the important places. And then when I got home, I, I was sort of interested in uh, you know, sort of that time period of our history as a nation. And as I was reading some of the, the historical events of that time, uh, I happened across reading a, a, a rather interesting little account, the, the funeral of President Lincoln at that particular point in time. And he was taking his body to Springfield, Illinois. And they did it by train. 
And as the train went along, it stopped at significant cities along the way so people could come and sort of pay their respects. And one of the cities they stopped at was Cleveland, Ohio. There was this rather poor uh, black woman in the crowd with her son. And when they got up to the body to pay their respects, the woman picked up her son and sort of leaned him over the casket. And in a sort of a hushed voice, she said, Honey, take a long, long look. This man died for you. And I'm sure as I read it, I, I could feel emotionally being profoundly moved at that moment of how that woman saw this president of the United States, a leader who, who gave up his life so that she and many, many others hopefully could be free. As I was reading our gospel today, our gospel is from the passion of Luke. Uh, and it's that moment in time right before Jesus dies. I don't often think of Jesus as king. I mean, kingship is not part of my understanding. I, I've grown up in, in a democratic country. We elect our, our leaders. Uh, but kingship back in Jesus' time meant something different. And, and the people that looked at him saw different things. As we hear in that reading today, some of them uh, mocked him, made fun of him. But one person, that second person who was crucified with him, looked beyond that. Saw something different. And, and that's what we're called to do. Not to see Jesus as king as we might think of it or as we might have been reading about it or have read about it in our life, but see Jesus' power not, not as authority, not as somebody who's got control over us, but somebody who loves us, who, who wants the best for us, us to be in relationship with him. How many times when we walk past that crucifix do we stop and say, this man died for us. We're here. We have what we have today because of this man. He's a king, but his power is profoundly different. His power comes to us in love, in, in, a, in a desire, in a mercy, in a compassion for us so that we can hopefully be the best people that we can be. Perhaps today, if you walk past a crucifix like this one, or in your church, or in your home, stop for a moment. Remind yourself that this man died for you. As we celebrate the humility and love of Christ our King, we join our voices with all the voices of the church in asking God to hear our prayers. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that all who pause to give glory today will always know the goodness and kindness of Christ the King's Eucharistic table. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray in thanksgiving for the sponsor of our Mass today, Maria C. Villanueva, and we remember her special intention for this Mass Good health for Eller Villanueva. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the intentions of our benefactors, the intentions of our television parishioners that will be placed next to the altar, and for Mary Grace Carpinelli and Carmina and Angelo Carpinelli, for whom we pray in a special way at this Mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Almighty and eternal God, you restore all things to yourself through your beloved Son, Jesus. Hear our prayers and help us to live the truth of his kingship by serving others. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Friends, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all was holy church. As we offer, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gift of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you anointed your only begotten Son, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, with the oil of gladness as eternal priest and king of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mystery of human redemption and making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. Until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of blessing, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Nicholas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. All who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, 
O God, almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we humbly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but look on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We extend the peace to all who are with us today as we exchange it here. Exchange it with anyone you are with today. Peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorifying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
And may our good and gracious God bless us this day and always, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us proclaim the gospel with our life. Thanks be to God. And thanks to all of you for joining us today for our celebration of the Sunday Mass. Special thanks to the seventh graders and their teachers from Immaculate Conception Catholic Academy who have joined us and helped us to pray and to celebrate today. The uh, 95th volume of uh, the prayer guide is out and we'll begin using it next week, the first Sunday of Advent. So if you haven't received yours yet, you might want to let us know either by giving us a call at the number that appears on the screen or visiting the website, the thesundaymass.org, or sending us a good old-fashioned note or letter in the mail, and we'll make sure that one gets out to you. Uh, please continue to send in your uh, intercessions. We're, I'm sure that the Christmas letter is now out, and, and you can begin sending them in uh, so that we can place them next to the altar for December and throughout all of Christmas. As I've been mentioning in weeks, we have two more weeks until we make that big change from the Freeform channel to the UP TV or the UP TV channel. If that channel does not appear in your cable package, you can always view the Sunday Mass at the website or you can catch us also on YouTube. So have a great week, everyone, especially this Thursday is Thanksgiving. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. If you're traveling, please be safe. And until we meet again next Sunday as we begin a new church year, may the passion of Jesus Christ be always in your heart. Seating was a paid program for Passionist Communications.